Hey friends, Gator Bomb here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another five Friday favorites. All right, so we're trying something new this week and if you all like it, I can do it for the next couple of weeks. Kind of moving forward, we're gonna see how it goes. Um, but I used to do five Friday favorites here on my channel and I still do them from time to time. Um, whenever I have a topic or something that's been requested or something that I want to share about. My dog is like right down here. <laughs> like, I, Those of you that have dogs, when you stop petting them, do they like keep um, like trying to paw at you and everything? Like she literally like if I put my hand up here, she's like, <laughs> she's like, wait, <laughs> she's like eating up my jean jacket. Okay, sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> so I used to do five Friday favorites here on my channel and I would do them around different categories or topics like five favorite bags from this brand or five favorite sling bags or tote bags or I think I've done carry-on bags um, or I did favorite things of, I can't remember. I've done a bunch of different ones, but I thought that it would be fun kind of leading into summer and travel season and all of that that I would do a five Friday favorites around travel and different destinations that my family and I have visited, some that we've gone once or twice and some that we've gone literally for years. <laughs> I love sharing about our family travels. I do a lot of short form content over on Instagram and here on YouTube with different things about all of our trips, but I'm not big into like your traditional YouTube vlogging whenever we travel. That's just something that I've never really gotten into because I like to really be kind of present in the moment when I'm traveling and it's easy for me to kind of grab out my cell phone and record different videos and things that I want to remember and kind of document. But as far as pulling out like a whole camera and vlogging, it's never really been my thing. <laughs> so I thought that this was kind of a good way to document our trip and share with you guys things that we liked about certain destinations and answer a lot of like common questions that I get whenever we travel. All right, so here's how I think this is gonna work. I'm going to pick a particular destination or a trip that my family and I have taken and staying around the five Friday favorites theme, if you will, I'm going to talk about one, where we stayed while we were there, two, what we ate while we were there, restaurants and places that we would recommend, three, what we did while we were there, did we do some tourist things, did we relax, are there certain landmarks or things that I would highly recommend, four, transportation, to and from the location and while we were there. And then at number five, if there's any like packing related items that I want to mention, ways maybe that we packed differently for this trip or things that you should make sure to bring. I will also have a corresponding blog post that's more or less like a travel guide to this particular place that we went to every single time I do one of these so that you can go over there, you can see the five different topics that we talked about and I will have links to anything that I can that I recommended. If it's a, um, if it's a restaurant or if it's an area, if it's a rental agency that we rented certain places at, all of that will be in the blog post. I think it'll be the easiest way for you to remember everything that I'm saying and kind of have something in writing to um, kind of look at um, during this. I will also have probably additional things over on the blog, additional pictures. Um, I'm just gonna wing this whole thing. So I'm sure there might be something that I forget along the way when I'm looking at my pictures, like, oh wait, I totally forgot that place that I wanted to mention. So I, would probably bet to say there's going to be more information on the blog post than even what I'm talking about now. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. I'm kind of excited. Um, this very first one that I'm doing is on a destination that my family and I have been going to for, I want to say 12 plus years. The first time we visited here, my youngest, who is now 14, was one or two. My daughter was just born and she's 12 now. So I would say at least the last 12 or 13 years, we go to this place at least once a year, if not twice or three times a year. <laughs> and that is Anna Maria Island. I know a lot of you probably guessed that as I started talking about it, because I have shared a good bit about this little gem of an island as over on Instagram and even here. Um, that area of Florida has my heart. Like it is pretty much like a beach that my kids have grown up on. I highly recommend it. That whole area over there is just 
absolutely beautiful. It's quaint, it's like small town vibes, um, and it is like the perfect place to spend a week at during the summer. So we live in Central Florida and getting down to Anna Maria is always a road trip for us. It's about two and a half hours or so, so it's a really nice drive down there. If you're visiting Central Florida and maybe doing um, Disney, you could easily, in my opinion, tack on Anna Maria Island because it's about like a two, two and a half hour drive down there. So if you're renting a car or something like that, you could probably combine the two of those depending on how much time, of course, that you have. Um, flying in to Anna Maria, I would probably say to fly into Tampa um, Airport. That's a bigger city here in, in Florida. Um, and you can easily fly into there and then um, get over to Anna Maria. I think, I've never flown, but if I had to guess, that's probably a pretty close spot. <laughs> okay, so every year when we go to Anna Maria, we rent a house for a week. Um, typically the rentals on Anna Maria Island are Saturday to Saturday. Most rental agencies are the same. I think there is, some type of law or rule around this, which is why you commonly see the rental agencies doing Saturday to Saturday. I'm not sure what it is, <laughs> but that is typically um, the least amount of time that you can rent there on the island. Now, I will say that there are a handful of small like hotels or resorts there that my husband and I have stayed at. Bally High Beach Resort is one of them. Haley's Motel is another one. There is a Marriott like waterfront um, place that I know of. We've never stayed there, but it looks beautiful. So there are smaller um, or shorter term places that you can rent at. We just don't do those frequently. So every time we go, we typically plan on a week. It's a Saturday to a Saturday and um, we rent a home while we're there. Usually it's my family of five plus additionals. <laughs> we have either my, my mom, my stepdad, my dad, my mother-in-law. We have a, a big family I have sisters, brother, all that kind of stuff. So typically we'll rent a home that can accommodate um, everybody that would wanna come with us, I guess. So I will have on the blog post the rental agencies that we rent from. The biggest one is Anna Maria Island Accommodations. They're kind of known as the flip-flop company on the island. You'll see the little rental signs kind of all around the island for this particular agency. We've also rented from Duncan Real Estate in the past and another one. So I will have those links. They're so easy to rent from. The website is super easy to navigate if you're looking for like a condo, if you're looking for a home, if you wanna have a pool, if you wanna be right smack on the beach, <laughs> if there's a certain area that you wanna be in, um, anywhere from a one bedroom all the way up to, I'm sure, a 10 bedroom. Um, you can put in all of that criteria and then they can give you availability and all of that. It's super easy which is why we've used it year after year. <laughs> I've done a couple of videos of the different homes that we've rented as well as the um, Bally High Beach Resort. I did a full room tour of that on a short. I will try to include those on the blog post so that you can easily kind of get to those um, if you wanted to see some of those. All right, so what do you do while you're on the island? Obviously, you have the most beautiful beaches, in my opinion, that I have ever seen. <laughs> I love them. The water is so calm. The sand is beautifully white. The seashells are absolutely the best ever. Um, so obviously you have about a seven mile stretch. I think the island is seven miles total. Like it's very, very small. Um, but you have the whole um, beach side that you can obviously spend days and days at. You also have the bay side and that side actually is kind of fun to play at. Um, we typically will rent kayaks at least one or two days that we're there and we'll take them out on the bay side and kind of go in and out of the canals. It's so nice. If you're into paddle boarding, you can easily um, put paddle boards over there. There's just so much like water recreation obviously that you can do. Um, there are rental places right there on the island. Beach Bums is one of them. Um, fun and more rentals that you can rent all of that equipment from. Kayaks, snorkel gear, paddle boards, um, all of that can easily be rented from these agencies. So that's typically what we do, obviously, while we're there. Um, another thing that I would highly, highly recommend is renting a, um, like a boat charter for a day. There's two companies that we've used um, I can't think of them off the top of my head now, which is the point of the blog post, but there's two different companies that we've used that you can rent a smaller boat from, um, like a six passenger all the way up to, I think we've had maybe 15 on one before. So there are chartered boats. You have a captain, he knows exactly where he's going. Um, and we've snorkeled over at Egmont Key as well as Passage Key and some of the other little like islands around Anna Maria. 
They are so beautiful. The seashells are incredible, and it's just a really nice day to kind of get off the island and around it and in the water, and I highly recommend doing that um, one day that you're there. <laughs> Another thing that we like to do is, if it's raining, there are tons of little tiny shops. I usually will pick an afternoon with my daughter and we'll go out, like if the weather's not the best or if we're kind of sunburnt from the first couple of days and we need a beach kind of rest day, if you will. Um, there's Pine Avenue and there's tons of super cute, like boutique type shops, little restaurants, um, tons of different ice cream shops and things like that. There's also a bunch of like tourist type shops where you can buy your Anna Maria Island t-shirt and your coffee mugs and all of that. There's this one in particular that I'm thinking of that actually has parrots all outside the front of it and they're all named and it's so fun because every single year when we go there, we see all of the parrots that we've seen in the past and it's just really, really fun. So there's definitely things that um, are away from the beach that you can do. Um, Shiny Fish Emporium, I believe is what it's called, is the cutest little boutique on Pine Avenue and they actually have a section of their store that you can paint sand dollars, which is so fun, especially for like a rainy afternoon to kind of take the kids in there and make your own little special like Anna Maria Island souvenir. <laughs> You're also, as I mentioned earlier, very close to Sarasota, to Tampa, St. Pete area. There's a ton of like aquariums and kind of day things that you can do if you wanted to get off the island altogether and kind of venture into like downtown Tampa or um, like Sarasota. You can easily pop over to a couple different places. All right, number three, where to eat. I feel like I can spend an entire hour <laughs> talking about where to eat when we go to Anna Maria Island. I love the food there. There are restaurants that we make sure that we visit every single time. And then of course you can um, buy groceries right there on the island. There is a Publix right when you get on the island. There's one store that pretty much supports the whole island, if you will. Um, and we typically buy snacks and water and breakfast stuff, breakfast, lunch, dinner things, but we do eat out a good bit on our like favorite places in the island while we're there. But there is a fully like big Publix grocery store, so you don't have to eat out at all. Maybe if you have young kids and eating out is just not something you do a lot on vacation, been there, done that, <laughs> like, I get it. Um, there is a full grocery store for you to buy anything that you would need there. I will say though, um, like I mentioned earlier, rentals on the islands are typically Saturday to Saturday, so that means that everybody is checking in to their area that they're staying on Saturday at some point. It's usually four o'clock in the afternoon. So I will say that if you can wait to go to the grocery store till the very next morning or even the next evening, I would highly recommend that because everybody goes to Publix between the hours of like four and eight on Saturday night, and it is jam packed. <laughs> One thing that we like to do is just to bring a couple snacks ahead of time and some waters and things like that. When the kids were little, we would make sure we had like milk and their like necessities so that we didn't have to kind of venture into that shopping area right away when we got there. Now that the kids are bigger, we pretty much just eat out. We plan to eat out right when we get there and then the next morning we'll kind of pop over there and get what we need for the week. Okay, so what are our favorite restaurants while we're there? I absolutely love the waterfront. Um, it is over on the bay side. It overlooks the bay. The food is so good. It's kind of more leans towards seafood. So if you are looking for a really good place to grab some seafood, the waterfront would be a great spot. They have really good drinks. You can actually walk up to the bar area and get drinks to go and kind of walk up and down City Pier, which is right there, which is a great other activity that you can do just leisurely one afternoon. Um, but the waterfront is right there. I highly recommend it. Um, it is probably my, if I had to pick one, it's probably my favorite restaurant on the island. Another one that we love is the Sandbar. This is very popular on the island. It has a part of the restaurant that's actually outside on the beach. It overlooks like the beach side of the island and it has anywhere from chicken to beef to seafood. They're known kind of for their seafood, um, but this is a really fun restaurant, especially around sunset. So if you can get a table around that time, um, sometimes they do reservations, sometimes they don't, but it is just absolutely beautiful to sit out there and eat and kind of overlook the um, ocean, have your feet in the sand. It's, it's a really good one. A super nice treat and one of the most high-end restaurants um, on the island is called the Beach Bistro and this is a fixed 
um, price, fixed meal. I believe it's like four or five courses. It is a really kind of special occasion type place. I've gone there for my birthday before, my husband's taken me, and then we've gone one other time, and it is probably some of the best food I have ever had. Like, it is absolutely amazing. They have an inside portion of the restaurant, and then they also have a small select tables outside that you can actually sit and eat and have your feet kind of in the sand while you're, you're eating, which is really nice. Um, but it is a higher end treat for sure, but I highly, highly recommend it for like a special occasion. We don't do a lot of breakfast on the island. Um, we tend to be like late sleepers and then we venture out, but there are a handful of places that we have gone that I highly recommend. One is called Janie and Jack's, I believe. I might have that wrong. Ginny and Jane's. I always mix it up every single year when I'm there, but it's a small little kind of walk up, order your food type place. They have breakfast and lunch. I believe they close at two o'clock in the afternoon, but they have cinnamon rolls that are literally like as big as your face. Like I'm not even kidding. They're so good. And the best like breakfast sandwiches. They also have a really good like lunch menu of like hot sandwiches, like grilled cheese and hot ham and cheese and those kind of things. I would highly recommend that. There's also a donut experiment right on the island where you can go and customize your glazed donuts. You kind of have an order form and you go up and you select what kind of glaze you want on it, what kind of toppings you want on it, really unique things. It's like a favorite of the kids for sure. And then also the North Shore. Um, this is a small cafe. Um, it's right kind of on the water like of this little canal and they have the best smoothie bowls I have ever had in my entire life. I get one. I try not to get one like every day when I'm there, but I crave them. They're so, so good. They have really good coffee. Um, they have um, different breakfast sandwiches, but I always get the smoothie bowls. So those are like the three places that I would recommend for like quick breakfast food. Another place that is very popular um, on the island is called the Ugly Grouper. And this place is all outside seating. So if the weather is kind of wonky, you might want to stray away from here, but there is covered over top. So there's um, places that you can sit, obviously, if it is raining, but it is 100% outside. It is known for, I think, kind of their seafood. They have really good grouper tacos. Um, it's like kind of like a bar and grill type vibe. There's TVs everywhere. My husband and I have gone there to watch football games if it's during the fall. Um, it's a great place to go with the family. There's outdoor games like the giant Jenga. There's ring toss. They also have a live band. Typically every afternoon and into the evening, they'll have somebody playing there. It's a super fun, like chill vibe for the whole family. Okay, I know I've probably forgotten some, but I can't end this particular topic without talking about the desserts on the island. <laughs> Anna Maria has some of the best little ice cream shops. Um, there's one called Two Scoops. There's a creamery that has like really good chocolate cake. Um, there's also a place called Dips, which is so fun at night because there's like market lights outside and it's kind of like a boardwalk kind of vibe um, on Pine Avenue there. And there's just really good um, ice cream. So those three places we go, we have ice cream every night when we're in Anna Maria. You just, you have to. <laughs> All right, wrapping up, number four is transportation. So like I mentioned at the start of this video, we live in Central Florida, so we drive into Anna Maria. There are obviously nearby airports that you can fly and rent a car and go straight into Anna Maria. Um, since we live so close, I'm not as familiar with those type of transportation, but we will take a, usually a little road trip down there and back. When we're on the island, we walk a lot, to be honest. It's not a very big island. You can easily not have to have a vehicle while you're there. Um, so if you take some type of like a taxi or something to get to the island, you wouldn't necessarily need to have one, uh, a car while you're there. Now I will say that we typically will rent a golf cart and a lot of people do the same. So if you know in advance that that's something that you're going to want, I will put a couple of places that we've rented golf carts from because they do tend to book up, especially in high season, like the summertime. Um, but we will nine times out of 10 rent a golf cart and just take that around the island. It's super easy, it's fun, the kids love it. We do golf cart rides like at nighttime and it's just really, really nice. There has been a handful of times that we didn't rent a golf cart. Now we obviously would have our car since we drove there, but we um, will rent bicycles and that is also really fun. We did that one year and we just had our bikes. So we took them to and from the beach, to and from restaurants and ice cream, just around the island at night when it the sun kind of dies down and it's a little bit cooler. 
Um, so I would highly recommend um, doing that as well. You can also rent from some of these agencies that I'm going to list. Um, things for children like cribs and pack and place, strollers, all of that, beach wagons, all of that stuff um, you can rent when you get there. So there's no worries about having to like bring it with you. I will also say that a lot of the houses that we've rented on the island has come with a ton of that stuff already, like beach floaties and um, big beach wagons and chairs and umbrellas and all of that. So I would kind of wait on some of that stuff if you are gonna like rent a home while you're there because you could easily kind of see what the place has before you um, go and rent whatever it is that you need. All right, last but not least, what to kind of pack when you go there. I think I kind of just briefly talked about that just a second ago, but like I said, you can rent a lot of things on the island, almost anything that you could possibly want, honestly. So if there are certain bulky items that you wanna make sure that you have for a beach vacation, um, you don't have to stress that and you can definitely rent them when you get there. There's also tons of shops to buy things like goggles or if you forget a pair of flip flops or something like that, there's a lot of that on the island. Um, you can also rent um, like floaties and things like that at, on the island as well. So there is a ton of that if you forget it. Um, I will say that you definitely don't need anything like warm for the beach. It is hot like 90% of the time. We have traveled to Anna Maria like around my birthday, which is in January, and it has been so nice and cool. It's been in like the 50s, and to me living in Florida, that's cold. So I know some of you are gonna be laughing at me when I say 50s is cold, but it's the type of weather that I would kind of bundle up with a pair of like lounge pants and a sweatshirt and my book and sit on the beach and watch the sunset and read, and it's just, absolutely glorious so i will say maybe like a lightweight sweater um for the evenings or something like that but other than that shorts t-shirts flip-flops it's definitely a beach vibe <laughs> i honestly can't really think of anything specific to anna maria island that i would make sure that you bring with you obviously your swimsuit things like that it is a beach vacation so anything that you would need around there um, but honestly, if you forget something, um, you can probably find it there on the island. There's not a ton um, that you will need while you're there. <laughs> as far as kind of like what to wear on the island, it is a very chill beach vibe. There's not really any places that I can think of off the top of my head that you would have to dress nice for. The Beach Bistro is definitely the nicest place, I think, on the island. Um, there's not a big nightlife, so you don't really need going out type clothing the island shuts down at about 10 p.m which is glorious if you have kids and if it's a family um if you're looking for more of like a later night vibe you can kind of drive into sarasota i think they have some later night kind of things or whatnot or even tampa of course but the island itself pretty much shuts down around 10 p.m so you don't need a whole lot um for like going out or things like that any restaurant that I named, you could easily wear a jean jacket and a little shirt or shorts or what have you. Um, you definitely don't need anything super fancy. All right, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I get a lot of questions about Anna Maria Island and I've always wanted to have this type of video to kind of sit down and talk about um, the blog post will be up and it will have everything I talked about and probably more. I feel like I forgot a bunch as I started talking here. <laughs> I know this video is already gonna be long, but I know that there's probably important things about the island that I love um, that I forgot to tell you. So I'll have that down below as well. If you like these types of videos, if you would enjoy seeing more like this kind of travel guide type places um, or videos of places that we've been, please let me know down below. I would love your feedback as this is kind of out of my element, I guess. <laughs> so until next time, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I will talk to you soon. Bye.